Hello, welcome to my blog ADC English Literature. I am Ardhan Dude. Today we are going to read William Shakespeare's beautiful sonnet, sonnet number 18. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? As you all know, William Shakespeare had composed 150 odd sonnets addressed either to his fair friend or to the dark lady, and two of his sonnets were address to bind boy god Cupid. Now sonnet number 18 is a typical sonnet by William Shakespeare which has been addressed to his fair friend the young man that has the qualities of being addressed to or who had the young man is of excellence and his fair friend his patron his WH in so many of the names he has called him. It is quite difficult to identify if Shakespeare's tone is genuine one or it is written for dramatic purposes. Now William Shakespeare's sonnets truly unlocks his heart or not that is quite debatable. William Wordsworth says that with these keys we can unlock the very heart of Shakespeare but uh, the critic or the poet like uh, Robert Browning has opposed that that if he unlock uh, by his sonnet the very heart of his then he is a less Shakespeare that is the very um, debatable argument. Uh, William Shakespeare in fact is a kind of a dramatist even in his sonnets if we see in minute details there are four pillars of his sonnet arguments that is William Shakespeare himself and his rival poet and there is a patron or fair friend and there is dark lady so there are four units and the tug of emotions are between them but primarily what pops up as a theme of Petrachan sonnets as well as the Shakespearean sonnets is basically the same that is the tug of war between time and permanency. The time is like that of a ravaging king dragging away or destroying everything in the way of its sweet flow and being a poet, poet like to withstand that inflow of time, that ravaging power of time by his creativity. So, this particular sonnet number 18 also covers the same theme. Uh, let's concentrate on this particular poem. But before you concentrate, you, as you all know, sonnet is a 14 line poem that comes from Italy, which means sonata or a little musical presentations. And here in this particular sonnet, we can find out William Shakespeare asks his WH, his fair friend, if he can compare this young man to the summer's day. But he at once notes that the young man had more qualities and that can even surpass the summer's day or the beautiful affluence of springtime merriment. He again notes the qualities of the summer day and that are the qualities of subject uh, or the subject of change and eventually they will diminish. These are the subject of death and decay. And he again uh, firmly tells that uh, his fair friend or the uh, young man he is addressing this sonnet will live forever in his lines of the poetry as long mm -hmm. as people can read this particular poem they will revitalize the very beauty of this fair friend or the very beauty of this young man. So there is an implied irony, uh, the actual, it is not that uh, the beauty is permanent, but rather uh, the eternal spirit is the very composition of the sonnet or the very artistic presentation of something that makes beauty permanent. Uh, it's not the beauty that exhibits in the world or the earthly beauty is the permanent one rather the composition that comes through artistry is the permanent one that's the message it delivers again 
uh, if we say uh, that the poem is a Petrachan one, if I say uh, that uh, this typical sonnet is Shakespearean one, what do I mean? The Petrachan in that mode, it is a thematically Petrachan that the theme is between the tug of war, between the earthly beauty and the beauty of the poetic creativity. And um, as far as Shakespearean sonnet composition is, metrical composition is concerned, it is quite unique one. Let's concentrate on that musicality or the metrical device that he has employed in this particular sonnet. Uh, this particular sonnet is Petrachan in that mode of presentation, so, or rather thematically it is Petrachan. It uh, makes a, a tug of war or it represents a war between that of death, decay and destruction by the ravaging power of time. And on the other hand there is the beautification of hearts or composition that makes everything beautiful. Uh, uh, and renewed by the way of its reading, by the way of the permanency of the literary output. So whenever someone comes and reads it, he will revitalize the very beauty of the content. Uh, we can remember Pencilian Sonnet number 75 that also refers that the beloved is writing the very names of his um, uh, beloved on the sandy seashore and again and again the lady love is complaining of that sort of things that uh, you are trying to internalize a name that is subject of death and decay but uh, the lover opposed that very concept and he says that your name will live forever by the virtue of his my verses so the, the same notation or the same type of uh, argument is being forwarded in this particular line but it is iambic pentameter that is typically Shakespearean. Uh, the iambic pentameter that means uh, uh, it has the unrhymed and rhymed, unrhymed and rhymed that uh, two syllabic uh, meter iambic and that has five units that's called iambic pentameter. And the volta of the sonnet or the sudden impulse or the sudden outburst of um, couplet or uh, the thematic uh, maturity that has been found in Petrachan mode, Petrachan sonnet mode is also found here. So three quadrant and that is the A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F. But after that three quadrant there is the two line G, G that is the couplet line. So in that couplet line there is volta or the jump of thought or a sudden maturity of expressing the ideas. As I have already discussed the point that Shakespearean sonnets are addressed either to his fair friend or fair youth uh, or to the dark lady and two of his sonnets was addressed to blind boy god Cupid. Now, 126 first 126 ones were addressed to fair friend or fair youth wh uh, another uh, sort of brief name that has been told as an identity of the fair youth or the fair friend in all of these sonnets the praise or the beauty or the all con concept of friendship filler feeling maturity of emotions are being exhibited to an extent even uh, the references of love which we can find out sometime tending to be homosexuality in that concept but nothing that sort of or arguably that sort of argument can be forwarded but here we can find out in, in the sonnet number 18 a, a robust and beautiful praise of the beauty of the fair friend WH So let's begin reading this poem. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? It states the line, the 
first quarterly reads shall i compare thee to a summer's day thou art more lovely and more tempered rap winds to shake the darling buds of may and summer's leaves hath all to sort it it so the initial four lines is very easy to understand it is being addressed directly to the the is the archaic word it means you so here you is the fair friend or the young youth that the poet is addressing to this particular sonnet shall i compare thee to a summer's day the summer is most welcome season in england so pleasing one it is akin to spring and the or the spring time is called the summer time in england in europe so this appreciating weather or affluence of this weather is to be compared to be as beautiful as that of fair friend or the fair friend's beauty or and the beauty of this summer can be comparable the first proposition of the shakespeare is that it's a rhetorical question it is being asked in the first line and the instant answer has been given in the next line that says thou art more lovely and more temperate compared to the season summer more lovely and more temperate you are more more temperate means you are more appreciative you are more changeable with the acceptance of likes and dislikes i can accept you as you can feel the very temper in me and i can appreciate the very you in me as i can have a ready made association with you but the very word had its double connotations here externally if it means to be the weather then the weather condition is very appreciating and in personage in terms of human qualities is called a balance of humans it means so temperate means i can have that balance of humor in you rather than in summer time i can have that bad weather or good weather concept but in you i can have a truly balanced humor as a person so the lines that the second line it connotes it answers the very first composition or the first line that is rhetorical questioning and it states it asks the simple question that are you compatible to be summer the answer is given that you are more temperate you are more lovely you are more appreciating you are more uh, appreciable to me uh, than the weather summer the next two lines says the rap winds do shake the darling buds of may the darling buds of may is which is the uh, darling buds of may it is rose because it blooms in the month of may so even when in the summer time even though it the time of blooming of the flowers blooming of the roses but rap winds sometimes do sex or do have that blowing up its petals and all such abnormal weather makes its blooming uh, ill tempered or rather uh, not so appreciating the aspects so flowers are blooming only to shake their petals cannot be appreciated but in summer time it does happen sometimes but in you but in you there is no such rap winds because there is no such ill tempers or ill humors in you and summer's leaves had all to sort it it if we take the sum total of the merriment or the gatherings or the very uh, by products of summer time or the very mart of summer time if we accumulate all this 
in time frame it is very short lived it piles away it uh, dwindles it leaps into oblivion it uh, passes by in swift flow of time but in you i can find out the summary of time so that fast stanza is quite interesting one and interesting one as it fast acts are you comfortable to be summer time the next three lines says the very hostility of summer time even it is more depreciating blooming flowers and uh, the very leases they are very by product of the summer such so lengthy one but all this merriment is very short but your case is everlasting coming to the second stanza it states sometime to hot the eye of heaven signs and often is his gold complexion dimmed and every fair from fair sometime declines by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed sometimes to hot the eye of heaven signs the eye of heaven is sun even in summer time even though it is so appreciating so welcoming the hot weather but it sometimes shines so bright that it is quite uncomfortable it seems so uncomfortability is there underneath the summer leaf or the summer element so summer is altogether is not welcoming as there are some rough winds and here is some some hot gleaming sunshine that makes it hostile and open is his gold complexion tint the golden is the very color of sun but sometimes as it shines so bright sometimes it is so dim sometimes because cloudy weather sometimes makes a shadow over the sun shiny sun but here complexion the very word Uh, may carry an outward and inward meaning as the word I, we have just discussed the temperate so the first meaning if it means the very color the second complexion obviously uh, compared to be not the outer shape but the inner shape it simply says the cheerful the as as in the case of temperate it had been the humor so in the case of Uh, complexion the inner concept is uh, the very beauty or the very love the very cheerfulness of that very person so the complexion of sun is being covered by cloud at the time of sun sunny weather or weather in summer time and there are some cloudy day even in summer time but in you but in you both the outer complexion and inner complexion in you is always humorous always appreciating always lovely and always welcoming if the fair from fair sometime declines if the fair from fair there is too fair in the way of this particular line the first is the fairness of the thing and second the very fair object so each and every object and its beauty is not permanent one because every fearful object or every beautiful object sometime shakes off sometime sets the very beauty of it roses even it blooms beautifully but short lived the beauty of the sunshine beauty of the sunset is all short lived it happens but it passes away very swiftly but by chance or nature changing course untrimmed how it happens it happens by chance by coincidence by the aspects of living by the aspects of uh, nature's 
courses or in the continuity of the nature something like that of a trimming of a trimming of a uh, lamp and trimming means that making its light diminished slow by slow so nature by its own winds or by its changing courses it happens that beauty remains short lived sometimes a rough wind by chance it comes or nature dreams it becomes a cloudy day so all these things happens in the course of summer in the third quarter shakespeare is quite genuinely praises the very beauty of the fair friend and comparative ideas of that summer with that of william shakespeare's friend fair friend w h he makes w h far beautiful and far enriching as a human being as a temperate as a lovely and as a inner beauty than the beauty of the sun or the beauty of the very summer time but the eternal summer shall not fade the eternal summer that means the very hotness here summer also makes the double meaning the summer is the very outer shape of is hot and the inner meaning is that the hotness or appreciating love feel feeling friendship that makes hotter that makes uh, that makes uh, a lovable heart or lovable core of or bosom of a human being that appreciate warmth or beauty in heart and that is Uh, the very aspect of fair friend the fair friend is beautiful by heart warm by heart appreciating by heart and but the eternal summer shall not fade that's why the eternity is there in the lines of shakespeare's friend shakespeare's friend's eternal beauty is outer as well as inner nor lose possession of that fair the host whatever beauty you own or whatever beauty you are presently having is never diminishing from you in summer time there are some chance and coincidences but in you the beauty that you have acquired is everlasting eternal so eternity concept or the petrician concept of eternity is here nor shall death Break thou, wanderers, in his shed, when in eternal lines to time thou goest. Now here the poetic design is there. How you will be eternal? Is thy beauty eternal? None can survive the very onslaught of time. Everybody and everything will be destroyed in course of time. But you are eternal. How? Because your beauty the position of that fair thou owned the position or the beauty thou have in position the beauty that you have in your own both inner and outer that should be understood both inner beauty and outer beauty that you have not shall they break thou wanderest in his said death even though make so many of the composition lost so many of the beauty so many of the fairness lost but your beauty cannot have a final say by death because you are undying you are eternal how that eternity how that endlessness have you acquired when in eternal lines to time thou grossed in the eternal ta- eternity of the time in the eternal prospect of time you will grow by my lines by the compositions or the versification or metrification that i am making in page of you in fact these lines carry a truth because after so many of the years so many hundred of years later we are reading this poem and trying to make a meaning or trying to decipher its meaning 
and we are remembering that we are friend or we are youth. So it is quite understandably justified. In the vault of the sonnet, arresting meaning is there in the last two lines. Even though in the last uh, previous two lines, uh, we have find out a meaningful rendering or a meaningful jump from the previous thought but in the couplet it is quite clear a bit so long as man can breathe or eyes can see simply if we survive the literature survive the line survive the poetry survive and the poet's love and accumulation of the beauty of his fair object will survive so is the double age so is the fair friend so it says so long as man can breathe or eyes can see so long lips these and give these gifts like to thee so how can you be the meaning of your survival is also dual meaning the first meaning is the the beauty the earthly beauty the outer beauty the outer beauty the body the physical entity you are no more you are engraved but the beauty that is survived in the lines, the surviving beauty that are artistically composed through each and every chosen words and turned into beautiful poetry, beautiful sonnet, these are everlasting and surviving. And thus it says, so long lives this and this give life to thee. So long this poetic line survive and so many of the times, so many of the readers are reading you and so many times you are alive, you are given a fresh lease of life, a fresh opening of life and that is the eternity of you and that is the eternity of your beauty. You have truly understood this particular parts, particular sonnet and this type of theme or similarity or this kind of parallel theme are many of his sonnets, Shakespearean sonnets. You can go through the same theme of continuity of beauty or continuity of fair friends or and the continuity of love, eternity and that concept of permanence as well as there is in the backdrop death, decay, destruction. So the concept or the theme of time and transience comes or pops up in many of his sonnets and with the same parallel line of versification that is Petrus and Mott and uh, which has been taken by Spencer Sidney and it has been taken um, by Shakespeare too. So these lines simply says, this sonnet simply says the eternity of versification or articulation of poetry and the poet has the capability of making a composition everlasting even it can win the battle ends time and the very onslaught of time can be diminished or minimized by the eternal participation of the poet with that hope that you have gone through these poems beautifully and understood it as far as my teaching is concerned i have given you full possibility of explaining it and i have I read it line by line and they about it and you can see by my pop-up windows many of the explanations I have given throughout my lectures. So like, share, comment and obviously share so that you can see many of this kind of posts in future course of my lectures. Bye-bye.